recording. There we go. All right. Um, so this mic is saturating, I think, you know, a little bit. So that means I have to so speak softer, um, which doesn't work in the class. So we'll see. I'll try to figure out a solution to that one. Um, let's see. Give me a second here. Let me see if there's a way to limit the saturation. Because I was listening to my own lecture and go like, hmm, that doesn't sound right to me. So let me see. Input devices. Test. Test. Yeah, I think it's still you're saturating. It's not a it, this is a limitation, not only that I cannot fix in software. It's good enough. It'll still work. All right. So what we'll do today is to talk about <clears throat> local variables in a function. So I'm hoping you guys all got a good chance to got enough time to study the past material because this is building on top of what we have already talked about since you know we moved on to talk about assembly language programming. So the current topic is callee only consideration and that's just the local variables. Okay. But just to summarize also, you know, what we are talking about, what we have been talking about in this class. So this is how we set up the stack. At the highest address is the last argument, and it is the caller's responsibility to push that first. And that's why it ends up with the highest address, because the items that we push later on are at a lower address on the stack. So that goes on, you know, back to the first argument, so there are stuff in between here too. So this is also, you know, the call, what the caller would push is the first argument. So after we push all the arguments in the reverse order, then we push the return address. And that is the responsibility of the caller. The caller stops basically right here. So if the callee, or the function being called, has to make use of local variables, then it is up to the callee, or the function, to reserve the space for the local variables. So now, the ordering of the allocation of the local variables is entirely up to the callee because you know, it doesn't, there's no need to conform to any particular standard. It just has to be consistent within the callee. So the way I usually do it is you know, I would allocate, or these are the offsets to various items on the stack. We'll get to see this later on in today's class. Is you know, The first local variable would be at an offset of zero from where the stack pointer points to after the allocation of the local variables. And then the second one is going to be, you know, whatever the size of the first local variable is added to the offset to the first local variable and so on. And at some point, you know, we get to the return address, which is this item here, which is what the caller co uh, puts onto the stack. And then if there are parameters, then the parameters will be in this order. The first parameter would be right after the return address. And then the last item, or the last argument, would be at the highest portion of the stack. So basically, this picture is also captured into how we define the labels, you know, down here. Okay, I moved the mouse a little bit too far, too far, too much down. Um, so okay, so this is all just talking. So it's good to demonstrate with a sample program first, just so that we can see how the stack is set up, and then also when we trace that code in the assembler then we actually get to see how the space is allocated and how we get to the various items on the stack. All right, so we are switching to the sample program, which I have kind of done a little bit ahead of time. Um, I just noticed that I am not, um, the screen size is incorrect, so I'm going to stop recording.